हेलो 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 मेरे प्यारे बच्चों हाउ आर यू ऑल आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग फैंटास्टिक वेलकम टू आर सुपर प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ फिजिक्स वाला वे वी आर गोइंग टू प्रिपेयर इन अ सुपर वे फॉर आर बोर्ड एग्जाम्स विद आर सुपर थर्टी बैच वेलकम टू आर क्लास वेलकम to our social science platform with vibha ma'am and today we are going to take up the chapter minerals and energy resources and we are going to go through a summary of the chapter we are going to take up some questions board pattern questions related to this chapter and we are going to make sure that by the end of this lecture you are prepared to beat this chapter up in board exams right chalo chalo bachcho let's start our chapter minerals and energy resources mineral is a term which you will also be studying in your chemistry classes but mineral how do you define a mineral geologists define mineral as a homogeneous naturally occurring substance with a definable internal structure and chemical composition when we look around us we have a land surface filled with different minerals but what amongst those would you identify as true minerals mineral has a uh, definite chemical composition and it is has also has a defi definable internal structure so if there is iron present if there is copper present if there is limestone present any mineral which is present in the surface of the earth or inside the earth will be identifiable by its respective composition or internal structure right so now uh through this how would you find out what are minerals we have two terms which usually are used as a synonym by a common person but because we are students of geography we are going to know what is the difference you say that you will find minerals in rocks but in geography we say that minerals are found in ores rocks are a random composition of different minerals but ores are those rocks from which mineral can be extracted in a profitable manner for example if we have a rock and we are going to mine it extract mineral out of it and out of this piece of rock only this much portion is of the mineral that we want to extract say i wanted to extract iron and i did the whole gig i hi i bought a land i hired machinery i hired labor i did all the drilling and uh, beating up the land and i extracted this piece of rock from the surface of the earth but out of this big piece of rock only very small proportion is of the mineral which is going to make me rich is it going to make me rich no it's not going to make me rich so if i am going to waste my money into extracting this piece of rock which does not carry a economically profitable quantity of the mineral that is useless for me so a rock which contains economically profitable proportion of the mineral that out of this rock only this much part is waste the rest is made up of the mineral which uh, we are looking for then yes extracting this rock would be uh, profitable for me economically feasible for me hence uh, the ores are the rocks from which minerals can be extracted in a profitable manner so we can say all ores are rocks but all rocks are not ores right so moving forward we classify these minerals basically we divide them into metallic minerals non metallic minerals and energy minerals the metallic minerals are further divided into ferrous minerals and non ferrous minerals right ferrous minerals which contain iron non ferrous minerals which do not contain iron copper lead bauxite type of minerals then we have precious metals precious metals gold silver platinum they are a part of precious metals in non metallic we have the minerals which do not contain any metallic element mica sulfur potash salt granite limestone sandstone these are all uh, non metallic minerals and then lastly we have energy minerals this can also further more divided into conventional sources of energy and non conventional sources of energy conventional sources of energy are those which have been in use for the longest period of time and are easily available 
the non conventional sources of energy are those sources of energy which have been recently identified and we have just started using them but we are not uh, converted entirely to using those resources we are still largely dependent on the uh, the conventional sources of energy like coal petroleum natural gas etc right so let us start our chapter by taking up these minerals how they are found in the nature and then by studying them one by one so the first thing here is what is the mode of occurrence of the minerals mode of occurrence is how will you find these minerals on the surface of the earth are they just lying about for you to extract or are they found in different geographical conditions so let's look at the different geographical conditions the first thing in uh, we find different kind of minerals in different kinds of rocks we majorly have three kinds of rocks igneous rocks metamorphic rocks and sedimentary rocks so in igneous and metamorphic rocks because these are hard rocks minerals tend to be found in cracks mineral which is uh, pushed upward from the lower layers of the surface and they are pushed up they are pushed upward through minute cracks and crevices so if a mineral is found in cracks and crevices of a igneous and metamorphic rock they will be identified as uh, veins and lodes veins are the small thin cracks and lodes are bigger cracks in which many of the minerals can be found we have minerals like tin copper zinc lead etc are obtained from veins and lodes veins as i said are smaller cracks lodes are larger cracks on igneous and metamorphic rocks so these are the first two type of rocks then the third type of rock is sedimentary rock sedimentary rock is formed by deposition of layers and layers and layers of sediments on top of each other so what we find here is mineral stuck in between the layers or strata of the rock right so in sedimentary rock a number of minerals occur in beds or layers like coal and petroleum are found in the layers of sedimentary rock second uh, way of identifying or uh, finding a rock a mineral third is through evaporation as a result of evaporation another group of sedimentary mineral including gypsum potash salt and sodium salt are found then through decomposition also we find different kind of minerals decomposition of surface rocks and the removal of soluble constituents so there is a rock on the specifically a sedimentary rock which is present on the surface of the earth whatever is soluble by the natural forces is decomposed removed from that rock and whatever is left is the mineral that we require basically bauxite is formed this way right then we have another important term which is placer deposit through placer deposit what we find are the precious metals gold silver platinum these kind of minerals are extracted through placer deposits these are fine sediments which have washed down the rivers specifically water bodies and they are found in fine sediment form on the banks of these water bodies so you have to to extract gold you literally have to stand in the river pick up the sand which is drawn by the river and then pluck the small small minute sediments of gold to get the gold that we use that's why it's so precious it is so expensive because it is found in such less quantity and it takes a lot of effort right the ocean waters contain vast quantities of minerals common salt magnesium bromine are largely derived from the ocean water so different minerals exist in different forms and we have different manners of extracting these minerals the process the process 
of extracting minerals from the surface of the earth is called mining right we have different types of mining we have uh, open cast mining we have shaft mining we have quarrying uh, we have rat hole mining different forms of mining are practiced in different kind of landform but basically the process of extracting mineral from the surface of the earth is known as mining okay different let's start with now what kind of minerals are found in india i guess uh, for every category two minerals are described two ferrous minerals two non ferrous minerals this way uh, two non metallic minerals this way we are describing taking up the significant minerals in our country right so starting with the first ferrous minerals ferrous minerals are those minerals which contain iron in them right ferrous minerals account for about 3/4 of the total value of production of metallic minerals and they literally can be called the backbone of an economy why so because all the other industries are dependent primarily on ferrous minerals specifically on iron and steel industries if we are self sufficient we have our own mineral deposit we are able to extract and utilize those resources for the development of our country then we are not dependent on any foreign power that brings a lot of strength economic strength to the nation the iron ore in india is found of is found in two categories we have magnetite which is the finest iron ore with a very high content of iron up to 70% and then we have hematite which is again a very good industrial level iron ore it contains 50 to 60% iron both of them are very good quality and both of them are used in the industrial sector for the formation of machineries for different kind of construction activities and they def uh, definitely make a very significant part of industry in india we are lucky enough to find so ample quantity of uh, ferrous mineral iron ore specifically in our country let's go through the map there are four pockets in which the iron ore majorly can be seen acha one uh, hint for you all here if you look at this part of the country this is the chota nagpur plateau i'm sure you know this is chota nagpur plateau if by chance by chance there is a map question and you have no idea where this mineral is found you have absolutely no idea where whatever mineral is found if you have to take a guess you have to just you know put up a fluke mark somewhere then mark in this area this is the chota nagpur plateau this is the mineral hub of the country most of the minerals of our country are found in this zone right so just remember if by chance i'm not saying that the mineral will be found in this area but this would be your best possible guess okay so just make sure that you put your tukka in this zone starting with odisha and jharkhand belt we have this odisha and jharkhand belt uh two very important mines in this area mayurbhanj and kendujhar they are usually asked to be marked in the map the second is durgabastar chandarpur belt durgabastar chandarpur belt the bela dila is a significant mine in this pocket belari chitadurg chikmagluru belt this is here in south we have kudremukh mine as a significant mine which is usually asked to be pointed at the map and maharashtra goa belt ratnagiri is a significant mine 
here i am just pointing out which are usually asked which are usually asked so these are the four pockets where we find iron ore on a major scale in our country right moving on we have the second ferrous mineral which is manganese it is mainly used in manufacturing of steel and ferromanganese alloy if you are going to you produce steel nearly 10 kg of manganese is required to manufacture one ton of steel that uh, actually uh, is the decisive factor in the quality of steel right so we need good manganese uh, in our country as well we have good manganese supply in our country as well and this mineral helps in the industrial development it is used in manufacturing bleach powder insecticides paints etc odisha is the largest producer of manganese ore in india so here with like a flower mark the map would be more clear in your ncrt i'm sure so here you'll find the map is not that clear nagpur balaghat bhandara these are the places where we find manganese in our country and uh, Odisha is the largest producer of manganese ore in India. So another significant ferrous mineral. Moving on to the non-ferrous mineral, we have copper and aluminium. Both of these minerals, non-ferrous uh, but still very strong metals. They have the capability of being malleable and ductile malleability is you can beat them up into thin sheets and you can also pull them into thin wires and that uh, adds to their feature as a metal right they have the strength of the metal but at the same time they are flexible they are not rigid as iron so the result is that they can be used in specifically uh, electric and electronical industries so mainly used in electrical and electronics and chemical industries malleable ductile and a good conductor of heat and electricity copper has an addition uh, here it is a good conductor of heat and electricity hence most of the industrial wire most of the wiring that you have at your house would be made up of copper right found in Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh uh, and Balaghat mines in MP produce the highest 52 percent of India's copper production the Singhbhum district of Jharkhand is also a leading co producer of copper. The Khetri mines in Rajasthan are also famous. So the important mines are mentioned here. Map question will be asked. I have a map question by the end of this sli slide as well. But we are going to practice map and image based questions separately also. Right? So don't worry about that. Okay. So first non-ferrous mineral copper basically significant for its malleability ductility and being a good conductor of heat and electricity the second significant mineral is aluminum which is extracted from bauxite it is again malleable it is also ductile and uh, the bauxite deposits are formed by the decomposition of wide variety of rocks in uh, rich in aluminum silicate it is not that good of a conductor that's why uh, of heat and electricity of heat though it's good not of electricity but uh, it has the strength of a good metal so the strength of metal such as iron with extreme lightness we know that many of the utensils in the house are made up of aluminium they are you know strong but they are not as heavy you can compare a cauldron of iron and a cauldron of aluminium you can see the difference in weight right so they are also with good conductivity and great malleability main bauxite deposits in india are found in amarkantak plateau maikal hills and the plateau region of bilaspur khatni odisha is the largest producer of bauxite right so the largest producer is uh, something that you will have to learn the names of these states you will have to learn right so iron ore done manganese done copper done aluminium done now metallic minerals are completed then 
we move on to the non metallic minerals non metallic minerals are equally significant we may think like you know only minerals only metallic minerals are important but non metallic minerals are also equally significant right so starting with the first one mica not mummy ka ghar not mica not the singer it is mica mica is a mineral made up of series of plates or leaves it can be clear black green red yellow or brown mica is the most indispensable mineral used in electric and electronic industry because of its excellent dielectric strength low power loss factor insulating properties and resistance of high voltage so uh, the electrical industry uses its features that you can carve it into any shape that you want and uh, if you have a fuse in the uh, close to the meter the power meter of your house you will see that the white material on which the fuse is connected is mica why because when the temperature rises up when the uh, there is a high voltage incoming in your house the mica will not get the shock it will just heat up and when it will heat up it will burn the copper wire connecting this so the copper wire will melt and it will disconnect the power of the house this is what we call fuse ur jana okay so it has this feature which helps it uh, to be very useful in the electrical industry mica deposits are found in the northern edge of chhota nagpur plateau kodarma gaya hazaribagh belt of jharkhand is the leading producer in rajasthan also the major mica producing areas is around ajmer nellore mica belt of andhra pradesh is also an important producer in the country right so three areas kodarma gaya hazaribagh ajmer and nellore zone the next non metallic mineral is limestone limestone is found in rocks composed of calcium carbonates or calcium and magnesium carbonate it is a basic raw material for cement industry and a very essential uh, input in iron ore smelting industry i'm sure you have read uh, the iron ore smelting process in your chemistry chapters and iron ore smelting requires the iron ore coking coal and limestone in 4 is to 2 is to 1 ratio and then and then only the smelting process will start so it is a very important element in iron ore smelting mostly produced in madhya pradesh chatisgarh andhra pradesh rajasthan gujarat karnataka and himachal pradesh moving on to now the energy sources uh we can also add one part to it when we read about the minerals and uh, the metallic and non metallic minerals that these minerals are limited on the surface of the earth and we do make extra wasteful use of these resources specifically with the electronic industry growing with such a high speed we see that there is wasted electronics there are dumps of electronics laying up in the corners of poor nations and we see that so much of metal so much of uh, the non metallic all the minerals are being wasted by human beings and it definitely calls for our uh attention that we need to start now conserving those resources we need to make sure that we don't throw away uh the metallic or non metallic waste and we try to recycle them as much as possible because otherwise it is going to just damage the nature and it is going to the damage is going to then come back to us in the form of difficulty in our life right so that is one part that we can add when we read about the minerals moving on to the energy resources as i said the energy resources can be subdivided into two categories conventional sources of energy and non conventional sources of energy
conventional sources of energy are those sources of energy which are the traditional sources which have been used have been in use for a very long time the non conventional sources of energy are those in a sources of energy which have been identified later which are still developing and we uh, are finding better ways to use them so they become a part of the potential resources whereas the conventional sources are a part more of a part of actual resources so starting with the most important conventional resource is coal how is coal formed coal is when coal is formed when organic material plants and all are uh, deposited inside the earth dead decaying plants and animals are deposited inside the earth and with the course of time layers are formed over that deposition so under the heat and pressure they convert into coal now this coal is very very important and because it is formed naturally it can be found in different categories right we have coal which may be entirely dry of very good quality or we can find coal which may be moist and which may not be fully prepared yet or because of the geography the uh, uh, the humidity the moisture content or the carbon content is relatively low so basically we find four categories of coal we have peat lignite bituminous and anthracite and in this series we uh, can also find the quality the poorest quality of coal is peat it has a uh, low grade brown it is brown sorry peat ha huh, found in swamps and it has low carbon and high moisture content that makes it difficult to burn because it's quite moist second category is lignite which is again a low grade brown coal is soft and with high moisture content so both these categories peat and lignite are poor quality of coal but still coal then the industrial category is bituminous coal that has been very deep and subjected to increased temperature is bituminous the best coal is anthracite which is the highest quality of hard coal it has the highest quantity of carbon and it is driest so if we have to produce energy we try to use the best quality coal but then again it is also the uh, most expensive coal in india we find the coal in two ages two categories of coal is found we have tertiary coal and we have gondwana coal the tertiary coal is relatively new whereas the gondwana coal is older right so the major resources of gondwana coal which are metallurgical coal are located in damodar valley west bengal jharkhand jharia raniganj bokaro are the important coal fields i'm sure you have heard of these names they are very significant coal mines in our country the godavari mahanadi son and vardha valleys also contain coal deposits the tertiary coal occurs in the north eastern states meghalaya assam arunachal pradesh and nagaland because these areas have high density of forest a lot of dead and decaying plants get deposited in the soil but at the same time this area the we are talking about the north eastern part of the country it also quite uh, rich in its rainfall quantity there is high rainfall in this area so yes coal is formed but it is not of that very good quality right so we have tertiary coal which is relatively new is moist and is not of that good quality whereas gondwana coal is older it is drier and and it has higher uh, carbon content right so first category of conventional sources of energy is coal the second category is petroleum coal is formed by dead and decaying plants and by dead and decaying animals you get petroleum it provides fuel for heat lighting lubricants for machinery and raw material for a number of manufacturing industry petroleum refineries 
act as a nodal industry for synthetic textile fertilizers and numerous chemical industry nodal industry is one industry which feeds many industries so if the raw material you are using is found in when you uh, petroleum when petroleum is uh, distilled petroleum is refined and different products are taken out at different levels then the industries dependent on those products will be accumulated around it right so wherever there is a petroleum industry those industries which are dependent on the by products of petroleum extraction they are uh, accumulated in the areas that makes it a nodal industry about 63% of india's petroleum production is from mumbai high 18% from gujarat and 16% from assam ankaleshwar is the most important uh field of gujarat assam we have the oldest oil producing state digboi naharkatia and moran hugrijan are the important oil fields in assam right basically remember digboi because it is asked very commonly to point it in the map which is the oldest oil field in oil field in india it is digboi okay now the third conventional source of energy is natural gas natural gas is an important clean energy resource it is considered an environment friendly fuel natural gas is found in areas where there is petroleum reserves you find it at the top of the reserves natural gas is existent the power and fertilizer industry are the key users of this natural gas remember this line cng i'm sure you have heard this name many of the auto rickshaws many of the cars are now turning into cng and this is compressed natural gas and is used in vehicles to replace liquid fuels in india we find this in the krishna godavari basin the reserves of mumbai high and allied fields are supplemented by finds uh, in the gulf of cambe Andaman and Nicobar Islands are also important area having large reserves of natural gas. A pipeline has been established from Hazira, Vijayanagar, and uh, Vijayapur and Jagdishpur. We call it HVJ, Hazira, Vijayapur, Jagdishpur, HVJ pipeline, which is a very high technology pipeline used to transport natural gas. It is a cross country gas pipeline around 1700 kilometers long. Uh, links Mumbai High and Basin with the fertilizer, power, and industrial complexes in western and northern India. The power. and fertilizer industry are the key users of natural gas uh, use of compressed natural gas for vehicles to replace liquid fuel is gaining wide popularity in the country many of the uh, even the domestic vehicles the household vehicles are converting into using the cng instead of uh, using diesel or petrol right the fourth category of conventional sources of energy is electricity electricity is generated mainly in two ways we have hydel form of energy hydel electricity and we have thermal electricity hydel electricity is when you create a dam we throw water from a high altitude on a turbine the turbine rotates and energy is generated thermal is when a big boiler big uh, boiler of water is heated up by the fuel using coal or petrol petroleum resources basically coal is used so coal is burned up a boiler is heated up the boiler generates steam the steam rises up and it turns the turbine so this is thermal energy right so by running water which drives hydro turbines to generate hydroelectricity it is a renewable resource of energy india has a number of multi purpose projects like bhakra nangal dhamodar valley corporation and kopili hydel projects by burning other fuels such as coal petroleum natural gas to drive turbines to produce uh, power is called thermal power 
it uses non renewable fossil fuels this is relatively expensive because we are burning coal or petroleum resources here uh, for generating electricity main uh, thermal power plants are in assam jharkhand gujarat madhya pradesh chatisgarh uttar pradesh west bengal punjab and haryana rajasthan karnataka odisha and delhi usually thermal power plants are not asked to be pointed in the map but yes remember the hvj pipeline that's quite significant this line marked on the map is the hvj pipeline right this is hazira vijaypur and jagdishpur three areas of, on which the pipeline is named moving on to the non conventional sources of energy non conventional sources of energy are those sources of energy which are recently created discovered or we have just started using these resources right so the renewable energy sources like solar energy wind energy tidal energy biomass and energy from waste material are called non conventional energy sources let's take them up one by one starting with the most important one is the nuclear or atomic energy nuclear energy is basically created from uranium or thorium the nuclear fission process is uh, created in a controlled environment in a nuclear power plant to generate electricity right nuclear energy is obtained by altering the structure of atoms produced from uranium and thorium which is found in jharkhand rajasthan and kerala this is a clean and green form of energy and we have very important quite very safe also let me add to that nuclear power plants in our country tarapur kalpakkam ravatbhata kakrapara kaiga narora electric, uh, electricity generated from nuclear resources is 2720 megawatts that is 4% of the total production of energy nuclear energy can actually be very revolutionary can actually add up and reduce the burden of being dependent on coal or petroleum but still we are working on it we are still trying to find out ways to produce more energy and make sure that this energy reaches to different parts of the country second we have solar energy we create solar panels we put it under the sun they get charged and they produce energy so solar energy is produced by sun's light photovoltaic technology converts sunlight directly into electricity solar energy can be used for cooking pumping heating of water refrigerator and street lighting the specifically the desert areas can be very benefited by this uh, source of energy India's largest this is significant India's largest solar power plant is located in Madhapur Gujarat I have seen that plant it's awesome right is used to sterilize milk cans wind energy or power which is used uh, the use of wind to generate electricity you may have seen different uh, wind farms where big fans are installed and they rotate with the power of the wind turbines rotate uh, wind turbines are used for this purpose 85 sites with a potential of 4500 megawatts have been identified in tamil nadu andhra pradesh karnataka gujarat kerala maharashtra and lakshadweep usually wind farms are located in area where the wind movement is constant and high speed so it would either be in dry areas like gujarat rajasthan or near the coastal area where there is a constant movement of wind near the sea which helps in movement of turbines so the largest wind farm cluster is located in tamil nadu from nagarkoil to 
Madurai. Another significant one-liner which may be asked in short answer questions. Biogas or what we call is Gobar gas plant. Biogas is a type of biofuel that is naturally produced from the decomposition of organic waste. So, uh, it's like a, mm, a tank is created and it is covered with a dome like shape structure. Uh, whatever waste we have from the house, from a farm, from the uh, animals, it is put inside that tank. It is allowed to get decomposed and release gases. Basically, methane is released. And then this gas, this biogas is used for basically household purposes and uh, cooking, lighting and its residential purposes. They can be fulfilled with the production of biogas uh, in like 1990s it was quite popular people the government encouraged to install gobar gas plants or biogas plants in uh, the villages so that you no know, even the village areas could have access to clean energy sources tidal energy is when tides the energy of tides is extracted tidal energy is the form of hydropower that converts the energy obtained from tides into useful farm form of power. Where do we find this in India? Gulf of Khambat, Gulf of Kutch in Gujarat, on the western coast and Gangetic Delta and Sundarban regions of the West Bengal provide ideal condition for utilizing tidal energy. But still we have not uh, done too much in the uh, area of tidal energy. Geothermal energy. Geo is the geography, the land, thermal is the heat. So, when the surface is heated up naturally and we are able to extract this energy and convert it into a usable form is geothermal energy. When heat and electricity are produced by using the heat from the interiors of the earth is known as geothermal energy. In India, geothermal energy is harnessed from Parvati Valley near Manikaran in Himachal Pradesh and from Puga Valley in Ladakh. So, these are the most important non-conventional sources of energy which are found in our country. Okay, now let's take up the questions. MCQs, very short answer questions, short answer questions, long answer questions, case-based questions and map-based questions. Right, so let's start. Jharia, Bokaro, Girid, Karanpur are important coal fields of which one of the following states? Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha, or Chhattisgarh? The answer is Jharkhand. Koderma Mines, located in Jharkhand, is rich in which mineral? Bauxite, mica, iron ore, or copper? It is rich in mica. Which one of the following statement is not true? Mica can be clear, black, green, red, yellow or brown. True. Limestone is found associated with composed of calcium carbonates or calcium and magnesium carbonates. Correct. Aluminium has got good conductivity and great malleability. Okay. Generally, minerals are not found in ore. Minerals are only found in, mainly found in ores. Which of the following states have most of the petroleum deposits? Rajasthan and Karnataka, Assam and Gujarat, Gujarat and Maharashtra, Urisha and Goa. So major points, major uh, areas would be in Assam and Gujarat. In which of the following iron ore belt? Kudremukh mines are located. Kudremukh is like the mouth of a horse. Maharashtra Goa belt. Odisha Jharkhand belt, Durgabastar Chandrapur belt, or Bellari Chittadurg Chikmagluru Tumkur belt. It is option D. Bellari Chittadurg Chikmagluru Tumkur belt. Which one of the following is an essential feature of mica? It is a metallic mineral made up of a series of plates. It can be clear, black, green, red, yellow or brown. It is not used in electric and electronic industries. It cannot be easily split into thin sheets. The true statement out of the given are 
is option B. The rest are uh, false. Which one of the following features is not true about copper? India is deficient in reserve and production of copper. That is true. It is reliable, ductile and good conductor. True. It is a ferrous ore. No, it's not a ferrous ore. So, option C automatically becomes our answer. Okay, moving on to very short answer type question. What are veins and loads? In igneous and metamorphic rocks, the mineral is found in cracks and crevices. The smaller cracks are called veins. The larger cracks are called loads. How are minerals formed in sedimentary rocks? The minerals are found or formed in uh, as a deposition between the layers. Accumulation and concentration in horizontal strat stratas. Which factor affects the economic viability of a resource? The concentration of mineral in the ore, the ease of extraction and closeness to the market play an important role in affecting the economic viability of a reserve. That's why I uh, defined the term ore for you. I may find a good quality ore in this region. But this region may be very far away from the uh, source of transportation, from the source of water, from the source of labor supply. So, extracting this mineral would become very expensive for me because I will have to hire and transport those resources closer to it. But if I have all the other factors nearby, then I may be able to compromise a little bit in the quality of ore. If I am finding a little lesser quality, but it is closer to the market, closer to the transportation, closer to the labor finance supplies, then I would prefer to take up that resource. That makes it more economically viable. What is magnetite? Magnetite is the finest of iron ore with a very high content of iron up to 70%. It has excellent magnetic qualities, especially valuable in the electrical industry. What are the uses of manganese? Manganese is one of the most important uh, element. In manufacturing steel and ferromanganese alloys, it is also used in making uh, bleaching powder, insecticides and paints. What are the uses of mica? Due to its excellent dielectric strength, low power loss factor, insulating properties and resistance to high voltage, mica is one of the most indispensable minerals used in electric and electronic industry. This question is asked quite frequently. How can we conserve minerals? We can definitely conserve minerals by making a planned use of it, by making sure that we are using it in a sustainable manner not wasting it or destroying the resource for future generation. Improved technology can allow to use low grade ores at low cost and recycling. The best part is recycling, reusing, making sure that we are not letting anything go to waste. What are the advantages of solar energy in India? It is expected the you that use of solar energy will be able to minimize the dependence on of rural households on firewood dung cakes which in turn will contribute to environmental conservation primarily because uh, we are located on the tropic of cancer we get abundance of sun almost throughout the year so if we convert to using solar energy especially in the rural areas we'd be able to you know get the people's dependence on uh, cow dung and you know firewood and will provide them with a source of clean and green energy. What is rat hole mining? It is a local form of mining specifically conducted in uh, the northeastern part of India. These are poor quality coal reserves which are found on a shallow level they are not found at very deep level so they are owned by families they are not owned by usually the coal reserves are owned by the government so these are small local very low level mines 
owned by individuals and families and uh, they are not very big in structure they are small holes dug in the surface of the earth and uh, for the extraction of coal right so it's like a rat has made holes on the ground it appears like that that's why it is named as rat hole mining how is nuclear energy or atomic energy produced Nuclear energy is obtained by altering the structure of atom by the process of nuclear fission. When such an alteration is made, a lot of energy is released in the form of heat. This is used to uh, generate electricity, uranium and thorium, which are available in Jharkhand and the Aravli ranges of Rajasthan are used for generating atomic or nuclear power. The monazite sands of Kerala is also rich in thorium. What is biogas? Where in India are biogas plants set up and why? Shrubs, farm waste, animal and human waste are used to produce biogas. Biogas plants are set up at municipal cooperative and individual levels. You can have a biogas plant at home level as well. These plants are set up in rural areas since they provide twin benefits to the farmers because these waste, human waste, animal waste, farm waste is easily available in the rural areas. So, it becomes easier for them to find the raw material for creating biogas. It will be very difficult for people living in the urban area to find all this material. So, the material, the raw material for creating, generating biogas is easily accessible, available in the rural area. So, and uh, their, their burden of going out, collecting fuel wood, making cow dung cakes will be reduced. So, it gives them a twin benefit. Differentiate between ferrous and non-ferrous minerals with example. Ferrous minerals account for about three-fourth of the total value of metallic minerals. They provide a strong base for the development of metallurgical industry. Iron, manganese, etc. are examples of ferrous minerals. Uh, the non-ferrous minerals. This is non-ferrous minerals. India's reserves in production of non-ferrous mineral is not very satisfactory. They play a vital role in a number of metallurgical engineering, electrical industries, bauxite, lead, gold, silver. They are all examples of non-ferrous minerals which do not contain any iron. Give a brief description of the HVJ pipeline. HVJ pipeline is a 1700 kilometers long pipeline connecting Hazira, Bijaypur, Jagdishpur, uh, reaching all the way up to Delhi. It is a cross-country gas pipeline linking Mumbai High and Basin with fertilizer, power and industrial complexes in western and northern India. This artery has provided an impetus to India's gas production. It is a very high quality and very useful pipeline the power and fertilizer industries are the key users of this natural gas in which two geological ages did coal occur in india we have two ages we have the uh, gondwana coal which is older drier found specifically in the uh, deccan part of the country we have tertiary coal which is a relatively newer coal and mainly found in the northeastern part of the country so we have gondwana coal and we have tertiary coal. Gondwana coal is good in quality. It's drier. The tertiary coal is relatively not that dry and not of that very good uh, quality. What are the uses and, and importance of natural gas as a fuel? It is an important and clean energy resource. A very significant pointer here is it is a clean energy resource found in association with or without petroleum. It is used as a source of energy as well as industrial raw material in the petrochemical industry. As a source of energy, it is used in vehicles as compressed natural gas. For cooking purposes, it is used as LPG, liquefied petroleum. 
gas it is considered an environment friendly fuel because of low carbon dioxide emission so we are trying to convert basically the vehicles from using the resources like petrol and diesel to using cng discuss the hazards of mining and the life of miners uh, and on the environment because mining activities are quite widely spread we break the rock we drill the uh, surface there is a lot of very fine sediment floating around which is breathed by the uh, miners and that you know puts them in a bad health the dust and noxious fumes inhaled by miners make it uh, make them vulnerable to pulmonary diseases the risk of collapsing mine roofs mines themselves are very dangerous places inundation and fires inundation is they may be filled with water and the coal which you are uh, trying to extract from the mine may catch fire and then it will be a huge disaster are constant threats to miners the water sources in the region get contaminated due to mining dumping of waste and slurry leads to degradation of land soil and increase in uh, stream and river pollution because we are disturbing the balance of the land a lot of times we may find that closer to the mining areas the water resources they get polluted because of constant movement of the surface and also deposition of the fine dust particles and sediments which are uh, you know thrown out from the mining sites okay we have case based question we have a paragraph and we have to read this paragraph and then answer the questions that follow let me read it out for you india is fortunate to have fairly rich and varied mineral resources however these are unevenly distributed broadly speaking peninsular rocks contain most of the reserves of coal metallic minerals mica and many other non metallic minerals sedimentary rocks on the western and eastern flanks of the peninsular in gujarat and assam have most of the petroleum deposits rajasthan with the rock system of the peninsular has reserves of many non ferrous minerals the vast alluvial plains of north india are almost devoid of the economic minerals and the northern plains which are made up of the deposition from river ganga and uh, uh, the river uh, indus they are not that rich in minerals these variations exist largely because of the differences in the geological structure processes and time involved in formation of the minerals mainly the minerals can be found in areas which are igneous or uh, metamorphic in the areas where there is sedimentary depositions or soil depositions these areas become a little deficient in mineral uh, availability where are most of the reserves of coal metallic minerals mica and many other non metallic minerals found they are found specifically in the peninsular rocks i told you know the chota nagpur plateau in the peninsular part also that chota nagpur plateau is the richest belt of minerals which part of india is devoid of economic minerals the vast alluvial plains of north india the vast alluvial plains of north india are devoid of minerals why is there uneven distribution of mineral resources in india lack of economic minerals differences in geological structure different processes and times involved in mineral formation both b and c would be correct that the part of our countries were formed at different times through different geological processes so the mineral availability is also variant which mineral resources are found in abundance in the sedimentary rocks on the western and eastern flanks of peninsular metallic minerals non metallic minerals petroleum deposits or non ferrous minerals we find a lot of petroleum deposits in this area mumbai high ankaleshwar and all right okay we have a question we have to mark on the map of india narora nuclear power plant digboi uh, oil field kudremukh iron ore mines rani ganj coal mine singroli thermal power plant so narora is in uttar pradesh 
it's a nuclear power plant just make sure you learn the location of all the power uh, plants we will do it in the uh, map exercise we'll also have a lecture for maps and image based question uh, let me repeat this for you again digboy oil field is in assam kudremukh iron ore is in here rani ganj coal mine and singroli thermal power plant these are the places on the map you should start practicing on the map empty maps so that you know exactly where the location are uh, a little bit of variation will do but you can't just you know change the location that narora you are marking in uttarakhand that will not do you have to you know make sure that it is you can mark it here 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 somewhere near on the point but not very far away right chaliye so that brings us to the end of our today's lecture i hope you learned this chapter well i hope you understood and cleared all your doubts if you still have any uh, more doubt you are free i am uh, available to clear out all your doubts just make sure you put up in the comment box and i'll make sure that i will clear all your doubts so stay super strive to be the best and see you in the next class bye bye bachcho